हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम विश्वित नाथ वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल बेस्ट फिजिक्स गाइड बाय विश्वजीत नाथ टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट पोलराइजेशन ऑफ लाइट आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट इंटरफ्रेंस एंड डायफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट बाय द फिनोमेना इंटरफ्रेंस और डायफ्रैक्शन इट ऑलरेडी प्रूव दैट लाइट is a wave motion but nature of wave motion of light was not verified by these two phenomena only by polarization the nature of vibration or nature of wave of light can be established you know that there are two types of wave one is longitudinal wave and another is transverse wave polarization is a phenomena which can identify the longitudinal wave and the transverse wave in fact transverse wave can only response the polarization but longitudinal wave does not response in polarization that's why by polarization we can identify that which one is transverse wave and which one is longitudinal wave let's watch the video and please click the like button and please subscribe my channel let us take an example these are two digit walls and a b c d and e f g h are two rectangular cardboard or rectangular narrow slits through which a string straight string p s is passed now the position of a b c d this first cardboard and the second cardboard are perpendicular to each other okay that is they are perpendicular to in this way and there is a some gap between the two slits and the wave passes from the point p to point s initially the string pq can be forced by any direction that's that's why the vibration mode of vibration of pq portion is in any direction that means pq the portion strip pq can be vibrated in vertical plane can be vibrated in horizontal plane or can be vibrated in any angle that means the mode of vibration of the particles in the string pq is any direction that's why the wave produced in the pq portion is known as unpolarized wave after passing through the cardboard abcd the portion the mode of vibration of the particle of the string that is qr is in certain direction that means in this case here the mode of vibration of the particle is in vertical plane along vertical plane since the rectangular cardboard first cardboard is in as a parallel to vertical plane that is a b c d is in vertical plane that's why the mode of vibration of the particle is along vertical plane or in along vertical line that's why the mode of vibration of the particle of the string qr is restricted in a certain plane that's why the the uh, uh, wave qr is known as polarized wave that is the wave qr is known as polarized wave if the second cardboard is perpendicular to the first one then after passing through the second cardboard 
we cannot get any vibration that is the portion r s remains rest because since the qr has the mode of vibration along vertical plane but the slit second slit restricts the mode of vibration along the vertical plane that's why there is no mode of vibration there is no vibration along r s okay therefore we can we can restrict a uh, the no mode of vibration of the particle in certain plane by a rectangular slit that's why this slit first slit is known as polarizer and the second slit is known as analyzer therefore we can say that applying two slits we can change the mode of vibration of the particles in a transverse way since we know that the uh, uh, straight string produce a transverse wave that's why the big this phenomena we can recognize the transverse wave okay that is the intensity of wave can changes or varies due to the position of the two slits this phenomena is known as polarization okay then what is polarization of wave at the due to the really position of the analyzer or due to the position of the polarizer or analyzer the mode of vibration of the particles of a transverse wave can be restricted in certain plane this phenomena is known as polarization okay polarization can be observed in case of certain in case of transverse wave in case of light wave this phenomena can be demonstrated by turmani crystal okay replacing these two slits we can placed two turmani crystals uh, two turmani crystals and light uh, uh, monochromatic light can be passed through these two turmani crystals the first portion that is along the pq the intensity of light is maximum after passing through this portion and polarizer the intensity of light becomes half and after that if that analyzer is normal to the polarizer then after that we can see the dark dark or we can see the dark um, area or we cannot get light after passing through the analyzer if these are two slits are normal to each other if there is an angle theta between the polarizer and an analyzer then the intensity of light after passing through the analyzer is proportional to cos square theta that is if the intensity of light is i0 of the unpolarized wave then intensity of polarized light is i0 by 2 and after that the intensity of light crossing or passing through analyzer is i0 by 2 cos square theta but theta is the angle between polarizer and analyzer if they are normal to each other then theta becomes 90 degree that's why the intensity of light after passing through the analyzer becomes zero if they are par parallel to each other then the intensity of light remains same which was which is same to the intensity of polarized wave that is keeping the fixed the keeping the polarizer in a fixed place and we can change the angle of the analyzer and we can observe the light passing through analyzer the intensity of light can varies okay 
this phenomena is known as polarization of light therefore by polarization of light we can establish or we can prove that light is a transverse wave here t1 and t2 are two terminal crystals t1 is polarizer and t2 is known as analyzer here i0 is the intensity of unpolarized light and i1 is the intensity of polarized light which is half of the unpolarized light and i2 is the intensity of light after crossing through or passing through the analyzer theta is the angle between polarizer and analyzer if we vary the angle theta with respect to the polarizer then the intensity of light that is i2 can vary in this way we can uh, demonstrate that which one is a transverse wave and which one is longitudinal wave. in case of longitudinal wave the intensity of wave remains same as the pq or rs or here the if the light is longitudinal then the intensity of wave at pq is same as qr as same as rs that's why the longitudinal wave does not respond the polarization therefore we can write i is directly proportional to cos square theta here i is the intensity of light after passing through analyzer this is known as mallard's law this is known as mallard's law here theta is the angle between polarizer and analyzer we can also produce polarized light by reflection at a certain angle of incident at a certain angle of incident the reflected light reflected light becomes polarized this angle of incident is known as angle of polarization and in this phenomena the following relation is followed by light ray this is mu is equal to tan phi here mu is the refractive index of the reflector with respect to the surrounding and phi is the angle of incident in case of polarization and here phi is known as angle of polarization here mu is equal to tan phi this is known as brewster law this is known as brewster law that is if phi be the angle of polarization and mu be the refractive index of reflector with respect to the surrounding then in case of polarization of reflected light mu is equal to tan phi this is known as brewster law okay in this case when the reflected light becomes polarized light then in this case the reflected light and the refracted light are normal to each other the reflected light and the refracted light are normal to each other let this is a glass slab and it is air medium pq is an incident light ray QR is a, a reflected light ray and RS is the re, QS is the refracted light ray that is PQ is the incident light ray QR is the reflected light ray and QS is the refracted light ray here QR and QS are normal to each other phi is the angle of incidence is equal to phi is the also the angle of reflection here qr is the polarized light 
here q r is the polarized light now i am proof the i, I shall proof the brewster law and here mu is the refractive index of glass with respect to air here pq is the incident light ray qr is the reflected light ray rs is the refracted light ray qr is normal to qs and angle pq n1 is equal to angle n1 qr is equal to phi here mu is equal to sin angle p q n1 by sin angle n2 q s that is mu is equal to sin of incident angle by sin of angle of refraction and you know that n1 q n2 is a straight angle that's why n2 q s is equal to 90 degree minus phi since angle r q s is equal to 90 degree therefore we can write mu is equal to sin phi by sin 90 degree minus phi and we know that sin 90 degree minus phi is equal to cos phi therefore mu is equal to sin phi by cos phi is equal to tan phi this is the proof of brewster law next double refraction you know that when light travels uh, through a, a, an isotropic medium then it passes through a straight line but when light travels through an isotropic medium then it does not travel through a straight line calcite crystal turmalin crystal nickel prism are the examples of an isotropic medium here pqrs is a calcite crystal n1 n2 is normal to ps ab is the incident light ray it is an unpolarized light ray ab is an unpolarized incident light ray by refraction through the calcite crystal it deviates or divides into two rays okay into two rays one is along bc and another is along bd okay and bc emergent along ce and bd emergent along do therefore from one unpolarized ray we can get two polarized rays rays here ce and do are two polarized rays this phenomena is known as double refraction okay here ce is known as extraordinary ray and do is known as ordinary ray ordinary ray follows the laws of refraction and extraordinary ray does not follow the laws of refraction here the mode of vibration of ce is in the principal section of the crystal that is the mode of vibration of the extraordinary ray is parallel to the principal section of the crystal but the mode of vibration of the ordinary ray that is do is normal to the or perpendicular to the mode uh, perpendicular to the principal section this phenomena is known as double reflection refraction by double refraction we can create polarized light from an unpolarized light therefore if we place a single point source at a point a and from the other side of the calcite crystal we can see two images of a single point source of light next optic axis what is optic axis a crystal has one or more than one 
axis or direction of light rays through which we cannot observe double reflect refraction these directions are known as optic axis along the direction of optic axis the velocities of ordinary light and the extraordinary light are same that is the velocities of ordinary light and extraordinary light along the optic axis are same second the crystal is symmetrical with respect to optic axis and third optic axis is a direction and not a particular line quartz calcite has one or single optic axis therefore they are known as uniaxial crystal and mica has two optic axis that's why mica is known as biaxial crystal now refractive index of ordinary ray is mu zero is equal to velocity of light in vacuum divided by velocity of ordinary light ray ordinary light ray and refractive index of extraordinary light mu e is equal to velocity of light in vacuum divided by velocity of extraordinary light ray for negative crystal mu e less than mu zero and for positive crystal mu e greater than mu o example of negative crystal is calcite an example of positive crystal is quartz next polaroids what is polaroids a polaroids consists of a large polarizing film mounted between two glass sheets this film is a thin sheet of nitrocellulose packed with ultra microscopic ultra microscopic crystals of iodo sulfate quinine with the optic axis of all of them parallel to each other therefore this polaroid acts as a this polaroid acts as a polarizer and analyzer applying two polarizer we can change the intensity of intensity of emergent light ray that's why polaroids is used in sunglass in the window of the plane or car etc we can also use polaroids in a 3d picture to create 3d picture to view 3d picture and to increase the contrast of the old oil painting next plain polarized light when the intensity of polarized light can vary from 0 to maximum value with the change of the angle of analyzer with respect to the polarizer then this is known as plain polarized light i already discussed it about it in the previous topic it follows the equation y is equal to plus minus b by a into x where optic axis of the crystal or polarizer is along ox axis and oi is perpendicular to the optic axis here a and b are constants b by a denotes the slope of the of the slope of the equation okay that is that for the plain polarized light the vibration mode of vibration of the particle is restricted at a uh, along a certain line or along a certain vector next elliptically polarized light when the intensity of polarized light can vary from minimum to maximum value with the change of angle of analyzer with respect to the polarizer then this is known as elliptically polarized light in this case the minimum value never be equal to zero okay it follows the equation 
x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. Here, optic axis, here the vibration of is along the optic, I mean, here the vibration is along the ellipse lying in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light. Okay. That is here the vibration is along the ellipse lying in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light. That's why it is known as elliptically polarized light. Now circularly polarized light. When the intensity of polarized light does not vary with the change of angle of analyzer with respect to the polarizer, then this is known as circularly polarized light. It follows the equation x square plus y square is equal to s square. In this case, the vibration is along the circle normal to the plane, normal to the propagation of light. Okay. Next, quarter wave plate. What is quarter wave plate? When the path difference between ordinary ray and extraordinary ray is lambda by 4, by lambda is the wavelength of the light used, then this doubly refracting crystal is known as quarter wave plate. It is used to produce the circularly and elliptically polarized light. In this case, the thickness of the plate is T is equal to lambda by 4 into mu e minus mu o that is the difference of the refractive index between ordinary light and extraordinary light this is known as quarter wave plate now half wave plate what is half wave plate when the path difference between ordinary ray and extraordinary ray is lambda by 2 then this is known and then this doubly refracting crystal is known as half wave plate it is used to produce the plane polarized light in this case the thickness of the plate is t is equal to lambda by 2 mod of mu e minus mu o that is difference between the ordinary refractive index of ordinary ray and extraordinary ray okay So today I am going to complete my discussion and if you like my video and please the please click the like button and please subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.